you welcome back it's time now to visit the papers and see what the headlines are we're going to try to cover four newspapers this morning beginning with the punch newspaper we're being joined by chief lecturer nigerian institute of journalism lagos state in the person of mr jide johnson good morning and welcome to the program mr johnson good morning mr johnson and welcome to the program Good morning to you, and it's a pleasure to be with you, and good morning to our viewers all over the world. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. It can al it's always a pleasure to have you join us. Um, let's begin with the Punch newspaper this morning. Um, interesting headline there. CBN raises dollar supply, lifts ban on cement, and 42 other items. Let's just take them one after the other, beginning with this one. Uh, what does that mean for our economy? Just uh, your comment on it. Well, that means that um, the demand for supply, the demand for dollar, in actual sense, in terms of people looking for forex, um, will almost be met by the supply. In the past, the scarcity of dollars, as a result of that, that lead to increase in the value of the exchange rate of naira to the dollar we hope this measure it will not be a knee jack measure and it will not be a stop gap measure because it was the, the challenges the naira has faced in the last 100 plus days is as a result of the knee jack policy of the president during his inaugural speech to um have proclaimed that well the unified um, there's going to be a unified exchange rate concerning the dollar to the naira without any corresponding policy to address the unending and unrelenting demand for dollar by nigerians as a result of them looking out for foreign exchange in order to meet up with their economic and business activity so we hope this um, will solve the problem in the short run. Um, in the long run, all we need to do is to grow our economy, is to improve our economy, is to improve our local, local, local output so that our export could be able to match up with our import, invariably grow our GDP, and invariably Naira will, will, will gather momentum and gather strength and will be able to compete with other foreign currencies globally. Mm -hmm. However, if you are, if they are raising the supply of dollar and they are also lifting the bans on cement and other for the two items that were listed as being banned from being imported into Nigeria, then you will see that one way government is trying to solve a problem and on the other hand government is trying to create another problem. Because don't forget that these items that were banned and people will look for foreign exchange to to import this item into 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 Nigeria. So in my basic economic, in my basic microeconomic understanding, um, there's an attendant problem that this might also create. However, in the short run, there is there must there, there could be a relief, but in the long run, there's a need for us to go beyond this knee jack policy for. The government to come up with a concrete economic and monetary policy in order to um, strengthen the naira, strengthen the local economy, and make uh, um, our, our 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 currency to compete favorably with with foreign currency. And another thing which I think we should also point out is 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 also um, why can't we, for example? Let anyone that wants to buy a oil be in our own currency. Mm -hmm. Those that we sell the oil to pay pay to us, they should look for dollar and pay to us in Naira and then probably strengthen our own those with a proper economic understanding might have a clear court um, um, explanation to this effect. But as far as I'm concerned, what we have been seeing are knee jack policies, and knee jack policies can only serve you in the short run. It cannot solve your problem in the long run. Mm. <clears throat> Interesting. Okay, um, another headline uh, with that, that we have is has to do with um, 
the controversy that uh, have led to um, Atiku Abubakar of the PDP taking his case to the Supreme Court. And uh, according to the uh, APC, Atiku's evidence from Chicago irrelevant, Tinubu tells Supreme Court. So, your comment on that, please. Well, um, the, the relevance or relevance of that of that particular case will be put to test when proceedings when, when, when proceedings start at the Supreme Court with respect to the petition by the PDP's candidate against the APC candidate uh, as part of their pre prayers with respect to the qualification or non-qualification of the president as out of today who are supposed to be the presidential candidate of the EPC um, in the March in the April in the Jan of the February 20, 25th presidential election. So it's not for the courts. Let's see the courts will look into the matter. I think the substantive element of the case should be looking into and not into the technicalities. Because what's much more important is for us to lead to rest all manner of all kinds of doubts. Um, the, the, the Supreme Court should look at the facts of the case and establish the case so that the case precedent could be could be established. One, to establish that well anybody seeking a higher office must come with a higher credibility. Or two, to establish that well um, the, the case you have brought against this uh, particular candidate does not hold water because from what we have seen it has been established by the institution that where this candidate has attended their institution has the right qualification and uh, by, by, by his appeal he is entitled to, to produce his own certificate. Uh, so these are the facts that should be looked into. And um, I've said it, when you bring a particular case before lawyers, you see lawyers that will argue for, you see lawyers that will argue against. And then, even before judges, we've seen cases where, for example, I give the case of Nasara State, you recall that two of the justices said, well, the election um, should be, uh, the, 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 the petitioner should be declared the winner, uh, while um, um, the one of the judges said the, the, the respondent should be should be should still be retained as the governor. So we have had cases of five to one. But those of us that hold the society a true responsibility of impartiality, of being the watchdog, of being the ones that bring clarity to issue is the media. The media, the, the responsibility is an institution of, of, of order. There is a huge responsibility placed on the media. Looking at the facts of the case, what does the fact of the state beyond the void of um, legal interpretation, beyond legal technicalities? Because once you bring two lawyers to look into a particular case, it is technicalities they will be looking out for in order to win the case, either for the case to be thrown out or in order for them to win the case. So we hold, a, we hold the society a comprehensive account of the true nature of things in explaining well. What has been established and what has not been established. But I hope that um, the justices of the Supreme Court will do justice to this particular matter so that we establish a clear court precedent with respect to the qualification and non qualification of people seeking our offices in Nigeria, not looking for technicalities. Mm. There's fear <clears throat> because. When the media talks about it, I don't know whether I will call it uh, the, that there's a blackmail that comes because they keep saying media trial has no, holds no water when it comes to uh, the law and all that. So people should not be talking about it in the media uh, always. So I see that as a blackmail telling you that you should stop talking until it is decided at the courts. And then you, you express fear about the fact that sometimes they use technicalities. And technicalities have become the order of the day where people will just tell you that because of technicalities, no matter the merits of the case, the case will be thrown away. I take the confidence from uh, uh, Bielsa, or, yes, Bielsa State, where the former governor, Timipri Silva, 
has or is contesting. He is the candidate of the APC. And the court has said that he cannot be sworn in up to like three times because he has already ruled for about five years or so. And if, he's, if he contests and he, he wins again, he will be sworn in like for the third time, which contravenes the Constitution. And in their defense, the APC is saying that he will continue to be their candidate, whether they have the time to change it or not, he will continue to be their candidate because the person who took the case to the court did not contest with Timmy Prey Silva, so it disqualifies him, probably on technical grounds. So it is giving them confidence that technical reasons will make them throw away the case. So if we are judging our cases mostly on technical grounds and throwing away very credible cases, how do you think this is going to be anything different? As long as the Timmy Prey Silva case is concerned, I think we should test it to the Supreme Court. However, there have been cases, there have been precedent that have been established that qualifies to be perceived. I don't know him from anywhere to contest that election. Don't forget that um, Jonathan, Jonathan sought re-election in 2015. In 2015, having been sworn in after the death of Yadua, mm. and then won, he won re-election. And then we also have a governor that spent 10 years, and I think he's a serving senator, even if he's not a minister now. And damn, and damn of you be get damn of you be spent ten years, ten years in office. He he was he was a deputy governor, and then the, the, the governor then died in office. The governor of UB then died in office. When the governor died in office, he, he, he completed the term. I think it was about two years or so to the expiration of the term of the governor, and then he, he saw the first term and he saw the second term. So those cases have been established. Uh, if, if you have that that have been established and the courts have not ruled on the matter, I believe that it has laid down a particular precedent because you can't deny somebody an opportunity that others have enjoyed within the same system, within the same frame of the constitution. It gives you a clearest indication. So as far as I'm concerned, based on my own military interpretation, if the dam had had that opportunity and there was no constitutional crisis with respect to that, if Jonathan had at, at won the election in 2015, Jonathan will have done 10 years in the presidency and it would have caused any question. Why, why would you not apply it to Timothy Pesiva? So as far as I'm concerned, if I'm in APC, if I'm in APC, I'm a legal counsel to APC, I'll draw attention to all of those to all of those pointers that I've raised and then I will insist that the Pesiva is our candidate. I think that they should, they should not be talking about um, the, whether the person contested the election, he did not contest the election, uh, whether it's a party contested the primary or not, he, sh he should just look at the substantive nature of the of the matter. And from substance and from what we have seen with interpretation, um, people that uh, have either replaced their principal, uh, well, if you say that he has been sworn in um, for one time, so you are denying him the opportunity of becoming the... the, the um, the, the country with the provision for eight year tenure and he's only spent five years. So, because you want to apply that law, you deny him the opportunity of having three years. I, 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 are, you, are you seeing the way this, this, um, this, this thing is, 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 is a bit ambiguous and in some measure of, of, of clarity? Uh, we are still talking about technicalities that we don't want people to talk, to talk, to talk about. I think the first time which he won. I think the court ruled that um, he, 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 he was, he, his election was nullified and then the election was conducted again. Or, or I think that probably replaced Jonathan. I can't recall too much about Baisa, but as far as I'm concerned, there have been precedents that have been set that people have been sworn in into that office three times. Okay, well, let's move to the Guardian newspaper. Um, uh, they say the, the biggest headline there is on sports, how funding and low patronage has robbed Nigeria sports to uh, 500 billion naira revenue yearly. But I'd like us to start with a smaller headline there where uh, they say yeah, controversy. Yeah. You want to comment on that? Yeah, it's very, very important. If you know the, the value of sports to the economy and the kind of contribution it makes, uh, is, is an area which I'm very, very much interested in. It's an area that I've heavily researched in that sense. 
And we just do take out spot of the American side. What do you think will happen to the African? What do you think will happen to the African American community? Now, take out spot from the British economy. What do you think will happen to the to the immigrants in, in Britain? Check out check out the number of African players that are playing or athletes that are that are performing across different countries in Europe. And look at the type of revenue it, it brings into play. Look at the type of investment. Look at the type of investment Americans invested in the British English Premiership. You have Arabs con competing with one another. The Abu Dhabi family invested in Man City. The Saudi family invested in Newcastle. Now the Qataris are looking to invest in Manchester United, pumping money into that group. You make money through sports, or you make money through 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 through, through education. You know, just as the fastest route to becoming wealthy for the for the underprivileged society is to use their talent and. We have had a situation whereby government over the years, in actual sense, since the advent of this fourth republic, government at various levels have paid less attention, have paid less attention to sports. And as a result of that, the kind of revenue they should generate, we should generate, we not generate in terms of TV revenue, in terms of advert revenue, in terms of revenue that grows the local, the local, the local economy. I recall when when um, MFM was in the was in the was in the EP, was in the Nigerian Premier League and then I was talking to a friend that used to work with the sister station of yours during one of the foremost in fact the first sport um, sport uh, FM station in Nigeria and then we went to watch this MFM versus Kano Pillars. You need to see how Agigri Stadium was packed full. And then we are talking about the impact on the local economy. People come to watch the game, they buy they buy, they buy drinks, they buy water, they stay in hotel, you know, the hospitality and everything, and how it goes to the local economy, and how it contributes to the local economy. And if you grow that, if that as well, you see people even coming from other countries to come and watch your game, or, you know, this this is critical area that government needs to, 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 to invest, to invest, to invest in, you know, invest in it, and you make money from it, and you take away a lot of it from drugs, you take a little bit lot of it from the street. Hmm. See what see what the see what the music industry, the music and entertainment industry, see what it has done. You see what it has done for someone like Bonner Boy, for someone like David Do, for someone like Whiskey. You can begin to mention their name, the opportunities, how these people grew up from nothing to become global stars, to become people at you look at the amount of money they are collecting, just because they have an opportunity to exhibit their talents. And that's an area in which you need to, to, to invest. I, I, I knew how many times I went to the stadium in my, in my, in my teen, teenage years and in my early, early 20s and early 30s. All you need to do is to pay a visit to National Stadium. It has turned to a relic. It has turned to, it has turned to a relic. I knew, I knew what Road Park used to be. I knew what Road Park used to be. I, 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 I play basketball. Play and ball, play, you know all of this is, and then we knew the value of national sports festival. We knew the value of his fund that creates opportunity, and then we knew the value of the shared cup between secondary school across the length and breadth of this of this country. Our talents are discovered, and these talents, as a result of being discovered, had an opportunity to pursue their career through their talent, through the gift that God has given to them. It's not everybody that will go to school. In actual sense. The easiest way for you to make money is to make money through your talents. You know what Zenit Zidane said? Zenit Zidane said that he doesn't understand how you'll be paid the amount of money for doing what you love to do. Hmm. Just imagine what it would have been for Ronaldo, if not for football. He grew up in an island, one of the poorest islands in, in Portugal, Madeira. But look at what sport has done for him. Look at what sport has done for LeBron James. Look at what sport has done for David Becker. And government across level, from local government to state government to federal government in Nigeria, in the last 25 years, have not paid attention to sport at all. It's just lip service. You are paying to it. Hmm. Okay. Um, a smaller headline there. Uh, it's uh, on so many newspapers now. Uh, about the fact that there is a new EFCC chairman. 
Uh, but on this particular newspaper, The Guardian, it is written, Controversy Trails Appointment of a Lawyer, Olukoye Day, as EFCC Chair. Well, um, the, the argument people raised was that um, um, there is a provision, that there are extant provisions in the EFCC Act which disqualifies him, but because it said that somebody must be in law enforcement and what have you. And my own argument is very simple. Which area are lawyers operating from? We would like creating empire for ourselves. Uh, I don't know this one from anywhere. I don't even have any interest in, in the matter. But my, 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 my argument is very, very simple. For example, in Nigeria, you say, okay, before you can become before you can become the minister of health, you must be a medical doctor. There's no way it is written. Now, lawyers are if you, lawyers are into law enforcement. They are lawyers. That's what they are trained to do. And now you have a lawyer. Someone is arguing that well, it has to be a retired assistant commissioner of police. It has to be the argument that this man is not into law enforcement does not hold water because by training, by design, by career pursuit, lawyers are into law enforcement. Who are those that they appointed to FBI, United States of America? Mm. As far as this, if, if we really practice uh, the judicial system, which some, some have argued, that there is a need for us to even appoint people in private practice with certain experience into our bench, across board, into the bench of the appellate court, into the bench of the Supreme Court. When someone has practiced, has engaged in private practice, to a certain number of years, you could you could nominate such a person into the Supreme Court. You could nominate such a person into into the Supreme Court. As far as I'm concerned, this guy is a lawyer, and a lawyer is a law enforcement officer. Globally, it's a global standard. We must usually have a global approach to the way we do things. Sometimes when people write act, when they when they when they are proposing this bill. They propose this bill in such a way in order to create empire for some certain people. Who, who do the police use to prosecute their cases? Who? Are they, is it not lawyers? So as far as I'm concerned, the man is qualified based on the fact that he is a lawyer and he's, he's had more than 15 years experience. And now, if you are questioning his qualification, you have already appointed him as a secretary mm. to that body. So if somebody had been the secretary of a body, you mean the person is not qualified to be? So it's into law, it's into law enforcement. We shouldn't be using term and there's no controversy over this particular over as far as I'm concerned, there's no controversy over this particular matter. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> um we move to the nation newspaper as we are drawing closer and closer to where we draw the curtain. Work begins on 260 federal roads uh, nationwide. Uh, it, do, it does seem like the Minister for Works is really working. And he came up with um, uh, an innovation that uh, the roads in Nigeria do not need any other thing than concrete. And people expressed fear that uh, the price of cement will go up. Instead, we're seeing the price of cement crashing down and there's competition between the two giants producing cement in Nigeria and all that. Some people have said it will raise the capital expenditure uh, of the country because of the way it is going to be constructed. But the gladdening fact is that 260 federal roads nationwide uh, work will begin and contractors have been ordered back to the sites. How realizable this is, is another uh, kettle uh, of tea. So well, well, there is too much euphoria and too much enthusiasm when we have new government as a new kid on block, just like the euphoria and the enthusiasm and the excitement that characterize Fashola's appointment as Minister of Works, Power and Housing in the first time of Buhari before the portfolio was further reduced. As far as I'm concerned, um, we always see this enthusiasm and this, uh, this, this excitement at the beginning. I hope the momentum will, 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 be, will, will, will be sustained because um, we had, for example, for us in Lagos State, we had the Minister of Works for eight years. Minister of Works for the first time 
at the federal level for eight years. All you need to do is to take a trip to Todmilan Bridge, and you know the amount of money, partial hours and partial stewardship of of this of, of, of the Ministry of Works spent on Todmilan Bridge, but on, on the enforcement of the bridge. But you go and look at the surface of that bridge now. I pass I pass through that bridge, and then I know what it did to my car. And then I, I went from Lagos, I went from Ikurudu to Imbota, Imbota. That road from Ikurudu to Imbota leads to Ijebu, the federal road. You see, you won't believe that Lagos had the opportunity of having a minister for eight years. That road is a complete mess in front of Lagos State University of Technology. It's a complete mess. I regretted because I took my son to school. I regretted driving my car through that road. In natural sense, I don't know how much money I'm going to spend on that on that particular road. So they come, they are now they are doing they are renovating 260 roads, the core press conference, and at the end of the day, the reality that we have on ground does not meet up with the the excitement and the enthusiasm and the publicity they are giving to what what um, they are doing. I hope they will keep to their promise and we hold them accountable. I think we should we hold them accountable to what they have done. The eight years of Fashola did not help us with Todd Milambi, did not help us with uh, Kurudu to Imata. They did not even finish that of Shagamu to Ikurudu as well. So we we'll wait and see what this um, this this administration will do with respect to um, the use concrete, the use concrete. In natural sense, concrete will last longer, it lasts better. It's considering the terrain that we, we, we have if we have we have we have in Nigeria it, it it's it's i think it it's, it's better and it, it will last longer i hope they just keep to their promise and the momentum with which they start is sustained to us till the end other than for us to start with a with a good momentum and then as and gather steam and as we progress they begin to lose steam and they begin to take they begin to take their eye off the ball as far as i'm concerned some of our roads are dead trap some of our roads the third mainland bridge that they spend money that they close many times and i'm saying it if Ashola is hearing me it will be it is it is a major thing in his career with respect to with respect to his performance as minister as minister we need need number of times they close third mainland bridge under brown's administration but just go and look at the surface go and look at the surface of that of that it's a death trap there is a death trap it's, it's a major disgrace to us as a country, to us as a people, and to those that were given the opportunity to superintend over the Ministry of Works for eight years. Hmm. I pass through there every day, so I know what you're talking about. It's you pray for a hold up to happen on that bridge because if it is free and you are trying to speed, you enter into more trouble than than not necessary. Okay, um, we'll move to the nature news. Nature newspaper is uh, uh, leading with a story, Tinubu, that's flood control. Tinubu forms committee to tackle Nigeria's flood crisis. And the rider is 45 killed, 171,545 displaced by flood in 13 states. That's according to NEMA. Well, um, you know what happened last year? When we all knew this would always happen every year. When Cameroon released water from one of its dam. We knew it. And how many states were affected. And then we know what a flooding does to, to the environment. And we know what flooding does to 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 to, 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 to farms or farmers across the land and breadth of, of this country. And then if you look at the amount of money government said the 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 they invest in terms of subsidy to farmers and the rest of it. You begin to ask yourself this question is this money actually going to the farmers or is it actually going to the private coffers of those that are meant to implement or execute this policy as far as this issue of flooding is concerned it's a perennial problem there are people in them we have had permanent secretary we have had people we have had technical people with technical experience that have been in these agencies for more than 10 years and that have received government funding with respect to tackling this problem you see, when new administration come, people begin to talk tough. They begin to act like Van Damme, and they begin to to form to form tough, tough guy like Bandizu. And uh, after a while, eyes are taken away from the board, and then the people are left to 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 their fate. 
that it becomes business as usual. The issue of flooding is not just a problem. It's not about setting up a committee. There have been series of committees set up over and over and over by successive government. What is required is, is decisive action. What are the steps they are taking to address <coughs> this particular, this particular, this particular, this particular, this particular issue? One thing I can never take away from Pashola's administration when he was governor of Lagos State is the issue of of flooding, of dealing with flooding, of of of, of channeling all the canals, all the canals in Lagos to ensure that there was no there was because the test case to his administration happened in 2011 when there was this heavy rainfall in Lagos State and it opened their eye and then it, a serious comprehensive effort was put in place to return the old canal in Lagos that takes all the flood water and for many years Lagos did not have problem with flooding. We have gone back to it. So there are ways to solve this problem and ways of solving this problem is not by setting up committee. It's not by having a talk shop or a workshop. It's by having an action shop. Government to take actions. What do we need to do to solve? The states are where, who, which states are bordering Cameroon? And how can we really channel whatever water that is released from the dam back into the ocean? This should be the steps, not committee, not committee at this stage. Well, maybe the committee will be looking at that <clears throat> because there is this talk that since 1982 that Cameroon uh, built that dam, we were supposed to do something as well, maybe build our own dams that will cushion the effect of the release of that water, which we never did. And we keep warning people every year to be mindful, to leave where they live, leave their crops behind, leave their ancestral lands behind every year to go to higher ground and all that. Maybe this committee will look into those issues and address them once and for all. Like you said, Fashola yeah. did it in Lagos. It can be done at the national level. Don't you think? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's just it's just basic as ABC for us to be decisive about it, and for people not to make money out of the misfortunes of others. If you move the amount of money Nigerian votes year in year out to address this problem, show sure that some of these challenges you have you have raised it. If Cameroon is releasing the water from the dam, there is a need for Nigerian from Nigeria and for us to also control our own, to control, to build our own dam in order to control the flow of, of, of whatever water is released, is released by, by Cameroon from their dam. We had agreement, we had agreement with Niji with respect to River Niger. We had agreement. So why can't we have such, 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 such arrangement and such agreement with Cameroon in order for us not to have this, it, it, perennial problem that, that renders people that destroys people's economic economic investment that destroy that 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 destroys their lives and their property without getting any adequate compensation from government. On paper I can assure you that these people are compensated on the paper. If you go and check the records on the paper uh, they will be an okay victims uh, this is the compensation government has given to 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 flood victims from this from this from this particular area. But in reality, these people will not have access to money. The evidences are there. All they need to do is for somebody to just waste a memo. In view of the flooding, sources that are affected the 13 states, please approve the release of sources as compensation for families that are affected. And then the money will be collected by one person or group of people. And at the end of the day, do not even get to actual victims of this flood. There is a need for us to, to put in place proper measure that takes care of our citizens and not some select individual or powerful, powerful elite within the system. You know, that's also the excuse we give for the reason why we remove, we remove uh, fuel subsidy in the first system. Said it's some cabal, some powerful elite are making money from, 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 from the subsidy payment. And it's the same thing to apply with what we have with these um, people that are faced with perennial problems of, of flooding as a result of what have been released from the dam in Cameroon. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your thoughts this morning on uh, the headlines on our national dailies, uh, Mr. Jide Johnson. Thank you so much for coming. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for having me. Have a good Friday. Ensure that you, 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 you enjoy yourself. 
and also put your safety into consideration when you drive to Todd Miller Bridge every day. Thank you very much. I have been my prayers as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, we've been talking with Mr. Jide Johnson, a chief lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism here in Lagos State. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at the fact that CBN has lifted Forex ban on 43 items. Stay with us. <laughs> 